Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the first of what I'm going to assume are going to be many little burst uh, review sessions over the framework as we go. Uh, remember, as I said in the message this morning, I'm not going to cover content in this. I'll have review videos or you can go wherever you got to go to do this. Uh, I'm going to more, I'm going to go more at it from how you need to approach the framework and how you need to look at this stuff. My hope is you can narrow some of this stuff down get it down to its basic components, apply it to the framework, and then you should be good. <clears throat> so we're going to start with uh, unit one at the beginning, way back from August, with topic 1.1, developments in East Asia. And if we look at learning objective one, we're dealing with breaking it down as simply as possible, uh, the political characteristics of these Chinese dynasties. And we're particularly talking about the Tong and Song dynasty during this time period. So uh, you need to know some of those characteristics of it that have carried over from previous dynasties. So uh, if you look at A there, uh, the Song Dynasty utilized traditional methods of Confucianism and an imperial bureaucracy to maintain and justify. And I've got some format there, so bear with me on this. But to justify, I think it says it's rule or something like that. So basically, you got to look at traditional methods of Confucianism and imperial bureaucracy. Before you get there, though, you need to be able to explain what the dynastic system is. That's basically what sets up how Chinese dynasties work, how the methods of uh, succession happen and everything else. And how, you know, it along with the mandate of heaven, which you need to explain as well, how those things contribute to these dynasties changing over time. As we get into Confucianism, know the basic characteristics of it, but also more importantly, how it plays into political stuff, how it plays into uh, how these dynasties function. And then kind of branching off that, uh, you need to know what the civil service exam is and how it contributes to the development of a bureaucracy, how it sets up the structure of the government, who works in it, how they get those jobs, everything else. So if you do that, you should be okay. Going down to learning objective two, uh, we're dealing with the spread of Chinese traditions to other places in Asia, like Korea, like Vietnam, like Japan. The process of how this occurs is referred to as sinification, which all it is is a spread. Uh, some things to pay attention to while you're studying. You need to know that filial piety spreads, neo-Confucianism develops and spreads, and the elements of, of patriarchy that come from the original Confucianism. Just, if you can, how they get to those places and then what occurs there. You don't have to go too in-depth into it. You just kind of need to be able to recognize them. Going down to B, you need to know the three branches of Buddhism and how they shape societies. Uh, the three branches are Theravada, Mahayana, and Tibetan. You need to be able to recognize the differences between those three. So just focus on that. Anything else, if we get back in class, we'll focus on there. Learn objective three, going to innovations in economy. These are the economic characteristics. So we've got political characteristics, cultural spread, and economy. Uh, with A, you need to be aware that uh, you need to be able to tie urbanization and markets into the commercialization of the Chinese economy. So how do cities contribute to it? How do markets within it uh, contribute to it as well? Remember, for a lot of these, we don't have specific terms. They're kind of overall. So if you can just kind of describe it, you're going to be pretty good. Moving on to B with the economy. We're going to focus on uh, innovations in agriculture and expanding trade networks to handle this topic. For the innovations in agriculture, you need to know what chopper rice is, obviously, but also more importantly, how it contribute, how it is a new thing in agriculture. What can they do now that they couldn't do then? And then with the Grand Canal, how does it uh, contribute to expanding the economy? In other words, what do these both have to do with an expansion in the economy? And you should be okay. Uh, that's short, it's sweet, it's to the point. That's basically what I'm going to do with these. But break China down into the political stuff, uh, the cultural spread, and the economic characteristics. More importantly, the innovations that happen within it. Urbanization, Champa Rice, Grand Canal, and you should be okay. Uh, 